of it do I really belong? It's called organized private sector. So I thought maybe the opposite would be disorganized public sector. So I really didn't understand which one I was. But, but the truth is this. This particular gathering is about knowledge sharing. I want to be very frank. I'm going to be very open and transparent. I will say it as it is. It's more about the future of Nigeria than actually the future of Lagos. So obviously, I'm going to go through some statistics. This is not a speech. It's more or less like you know making a presentation and trying to give a scorecard and to tell you really where we are and what we really want to do. So maybe I'll start. I'll say that we'll show you some basic statistics of Lagos. We already have a development plan, which is 2012 to 2025. We can then go through the presentation that I have, that I'll really tell you about the things and the projects that we have done and the ones that were actually doing work in progress. We'll tell you some sectoral statistics and then ponder some questions. And then the old story is how to create a new Lagos and then how to actually make the private sector to collaborate with us. And I'll be able to tell you the opportunities that we really have in Lagos and then just conclude from that. But the most important part of this is after my story, the real story is the ability for you to really interact with me and for me to be able to pick one or two things or learn from you and that's how this session we, we go. We already understand that this is being broadcast live is on channels, is on um, LTV and um, TVC, and then we're streaming live so that we give the opportunity for those who were not able to get the invitation card to also, I mean, tweet to us and then make comments or suggestions, and we'll be able to go through from there. So we will start with the slide. That's why I didn't want to stay up. I, I, I like to also look at what is going on. Can I have the presentation, please? One of the presentation. Yes. I like to have it in my hand. I used to be a consultant before, so I was in OPS before I started. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is the story of politics in Nigeria? Do you understand? You have to be outside to be inside. So when we're inside, the people outside keep attacking those inside. Forgetting that we're still coming back outside. <laughs> so, this is the vision for Lagos. By 2025, this is what we would like to be. And that's, that's what is on the screen there. Now, I'd just like to take people back on a journey. As of 2014, that's four years ago, I was a green. So, obviously, not a politician. So then I didn't understand the magnitude of what I was doing. So when I did my declaration speech, October 24, I had said my vision is to create a clean, secure, and prosperous Lagos state that is driven by a vibrant economy and supported by quality service, equity, and justice. And then, then I actually said for corporate Lagos, Lagos is open for business, even for greater business. So when we did the primaries and I won, December 4, 2014. I said, like I stated in my declaration speech, my candidacy is an attestation that our youth and their future is guaranteed under my leadership. Together, we will continue to build a Lagos of our dreams. So, when the election was held and we made acceptance speech, April 12, 2015, that's three years now. I'm now to be the servant of this state in its entirety, not just for APC members, but for all Lagosians, no matter their political stripes, ethnicity, or religious affiliations. So, May 29, in 2015, when I was sworn in, why we must be creative and innovative, we are not citizens until we become responsible taxpayers. I want to assure all of us that I will make your taxes work for you. 
you will surely get a transparent and incorruptible government that will give you good value for your taxes paid. All that is history now. So we try to look back 30 something, 32 months after. Have we lived to our words? That's what this whole story is all about. We said it, we did not understand the complexity, but again, we have tried to keep our word. And the old story there is about, you know, trust, confidence, and then we'll be able to collaborate together. Like you see on the next slide, Lagos, fifth largest economy in Africa. You see the population number. 65% of those living in Lagos are actually the, below the age of 35. 15.6 million youth population. According to United Nations statistics, 86 persons enter into Lagos every one hour, the largest in the world, followed by Mumbai, 69, New York, 11, and then London, 7. So out of these 86, you can tell by yourself how many of them are going back. This was 2016 numbers today. Because the way Nigeria is running, you can see that that 86 will be like 112 now. Okay, we're the fifth largest economy with GDP of 136 uh, billion dollars. So if we're a country, we'll be fifth largest. And then look at Lagos, the GDP is 136 billion, but the IGR is just 341 billion. Then what we get from federation accounts is just 133. And then the expenditure all combined together, 813 billion. So those are your numbers. And then when you look at the next slide also, you see the budget performance. These are actual figures of what is generated. So within that profile, you also see in the next slide how the money is spent. I want to reveal to you today that the total staff strength of teachers, doctors, nurses, civil servants, were like 103,000 of us. That's the largest employer in, in this axis. We are paying 10 billion naira per month. Every four weeks, you have to drop 10 billion naira as salaries. That's excluding the pensions and the gratuities that you pay. So technically, so if the say Lagos State is making 25 billion per month, almost half is gone in terms of uh, salaries. And then you start thinking about fixed costs and all those other things. So you have the challenge of a mega city in your hand. So are we getting money to pay for capital expenditure that you are seeing in the last 30 months? It's from the taxes that you are paying. And if the taxes do not drive the development that we want. So we said the basic thing to attract investment is to make sure that the security is okay. If security is okay, we'll be able to create jobs and then get taxes from there and then be able to improve on infrastructure. So I decided that I will only face three issues, power, education, and then transport. But again, when you look at the issues of power, everybody knows what's going on. We have 31,446 streetlights on the streets of Lagos powered by diesel. So you spend almost like 12 billion in a year to make sure that there is security. That's the price we pay to make sure that there is stability on ground. So when you look at the investments, you see the numbers there. When you look at the infrastructure also on the other page, those are the requirements and the financing gap that will come from there. Right now, as we speak, we have over 100 projects that are ongoing and also the ones that have been delivered I'm sure they're in your, in your schedule there, you see it. I didn't want to print it out. Those, those things are just issue of history. But ongoing projects right now, including the airport road, which is a 10-lane road, is inclusive of that 90. And you can imagine, if you're doing bridges around that 10-lane, what that cost will be. Right now, in terms of compensation, we have paid almost like $4 billion. And this year, because of the projects that we're doing, the Agege flyover, the airport road, and all the people were, were actually taking off the road. Compensation this year is going to be six billion naira. And you have to put a human face into those things that you are doing. If you don't pay 
These people will fight and then there will be no development.